this is Google's first foldable phone. It's the Google Pixel phone. I have been dying to get my hands on this thing long before it was officially announced because of rumors, y'all know. <laughs> and I bought this device from the Google store. Thankfully, it shipped on time, even though it kept on saying it would be delayed. So I have been using it nonstop since delivery. It's got some pros, it's got a few cons, so let's chat about it. Now, I would have been real keen on buying the porcelain color in the 512 gig model, but for some reason, this colorway is only available in the 256 gig storage size. Now, that's plenty of storage for most folks if you aren't a YouTuber recording 4K videos every day. The Obsidian colorway is available in either storage spec, and these do start at $17.99. Now, even though deliveries are taking a while at the moment, you can get a free Pixel watch with purchase, even an LTE model. So that's a really nice perk if you've been looking to buy a Pixel watch. I did an unboxing vertical short video showing what's included in the box. Oddly, it is shipped folded. I'm used to seeing foldable ship flat, as in opened, but it doesn't seem to have harmed the device in any way. Now, speaking of durability, I have seen that article about the screen dying due to a speck of dust. I have my doubts based on my own test. I took this thing to the Colorado Renaissance Festival. I'll show you some video here. Talk about a really dusty environment. I dropped it from my normal height on the ground, first folded and then unfolded, displayed down. This means that it hit directly on rocks, gravel, and dirt. And given that I bought my own device, I definitely had a moment of anxiety thinking that this was a horrible idea. I did not buy device protection. Oh God, there goes two grand out the window. But luckily it was fine and it's still fine. <laughs> I've got fingerprints on here, but the dust did not make its way into the hinge. I still have dust all around the inner display and I have folded this thing close to probably a hundred times since that day. It is still fine. To be fair though, you should not treat products that you purchase like crap, especially when they are so expensive. But accidents do happen and we do drop our phones all the time. So that is what I was trying to create here. I am glad it survived. I know I could say that durability is terrible for the clicks and the views, but honestly, I have not had that experience. The hinge is sturdy. There are no grinding sounds like you would get if there was dust under the hinge and both displays still look flawless. I'm still putting a case on this pricey piece of tech just because I put cases on all my phones. But if you are panicking due to one article, I would say don't. The only things I would worry and warn about are not to puncture the folding display. Those are fundamentally going to be more fragile than traditional displays. And don't bend the hinge backwards. The phone casing will break. In other words, do not try to break your very expensive phone. Now it is IPX8 water resistant. That does not mean it's waterproof or dust proof. It includes this alloy steel hinge right here that is supposed to be more resistant to wear and tear over stainless steel, a Gorilla Glass Victus back with a polished aluminum frame. So the materials themselves do offer durability. Now at 10 ounces, I was actually expecting it to weigh more, but it's got a pretty compact size. It's fairly small. It does kind of remind me of my old Nintendo DS in terms of dimensions. Like it gives me those vibes. Remember when you would hold your Nintendo DS back in the day and you would hold it like this? Like these dimensions are very similar to that. It reminds me my muscle memory of playing Tetris on my DS and that comfortable size that I had in hand. At 5.5 inches and at 3.1 inches when it's closed, 6.2 inches when it's wide open, and 0.5 inches in depth, it is very compact. It's small enough to fit in my lady pants pockets without sticking out too far. Meanwhile, this front display is wide enough to comfortably type on. It's almost like they took a Pixel 7 screen, here's my Pixel 7, and they made it a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. You can kind of see that comparison here. I have this phone turned off right now because I'm resetting it, so I'll just put this to the side. This front display is a 5.8 inch OLED display. It's full HD plus at 2092 by 1080 resolution. It's also 120 Hertz, so that's super zippy. And it's got that nice high brightness like I like for the Colorado sun at 1550 nits peak. I think that's great. It is short enough that I can use this in one hand and apps look fine at this aspect ratio. I have no issues with the cover screen. If anything, maybe some folks would dislike the bezels. 
but that's really all I could say as far as cons with the outer display. It looks really great. Now, one thing I certainly don't like is how online data brokers put your personal information on their sites without your consent. But I do like to include privacy and security in all of my reviews and Delete Me is sponsoring this video. Now, when I first found Delete Me, it was, it was years ago. It was because I had experienced some stalking and I wanted to scrub some of my data off the internet. So I found out from lots of my friends in the cybersecurity community that Delete Me is the go-to service to get this done. So I signed up as a customer and I have been renewing my account every year ever since. Data brokers like PeopleFinder or PeopleSearch buy your data and they stick it on their sites as a public search database. And that could be everything from your legal name, your home address, your kids' names, your phone number, whatever. They do offer opt-outs, but often they're complicated. Sometimes they require you to call somebody or fill out a form or do both, or maybe you have to send them your ID. And since there's tens, if not hundreds of these sites now, how do you keep up with that? Well, Delete Me can do it for you, searching these sites for your information and sending those opt-out requests for you. And they keep tabs on your data year round in case it pops up anywhere else, or if it ever gets added back on to those same data broker sites. They do send you a quarterly report every single quarter showing where they found your data and how many times they had found it. You do have to be careful about what data broker deletion tools that you sign up for. If a site is set up to collect your data and use it for phishing or spam, then that kind of defeats the purpose. There are scammy websites that purport to do the same thing and they pop up all the time, but Delete Me is the only one that I have trusted for years and it's the only one that I have ever heard my friends in the InfoSec community recommend. And that recommendation is really important to me because they are the ones that are protecting the internet from having to deal with more attacks all the time from malicious actors. Go over to joindeleteme.com slash morse code. Use the code SNUBS, that's S-N-U-B-S, for 20% off any of those plans. See how Delete Me can help protect you and your data today. And a huge thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring my channel. I'm a big fan and I am continuing to use their product. I love it so much. It has saved me so much time. <laughs> Da -na -na -na. It's the internal folding screen. Of course, this is the fun part. There's a very nice magnetic closure. I wanna close this and let you hear it. Oh, it's so satisfying. Oh, I love that noise. It's, it's just so satisfying. I really enjoy hearing it snap shut. It closes flat. There are no gaps and it does unfold flat. A lot of people will tell you that it does not unfold flat, but it does. You just have to give it kind of a gentle nudge to get it to that full 180 degree angle. Unfolded, this is 7.6 inches with a six by five aspect ratio. It's almost square, but it's not. The resolution is 2208 by 1840, and you do get that 120 Hertz refresh rate here too, with a peak brightness of 1450 nits, which is still very solid. It's made out of this ultra thin glass with a plastic layer over that to protect it and the plastic does not stretch all the way to the edges. There's like maybe a millimeter of space between the bezel and the actual plastic but it does cover the lit OLED on all sides. Now when fully unfolded you can still feel the crease and you can see it. It's right there. In certain lighting like when I twist it towards my studio lights you can definitely see the crease there but when I'm looking at it head on especially at full brightness, I can't see it. I can feel it, but the crease is not as prominent as it is on my Z Fold 3 or my Z Flip 3. I didn't buy any foldables last year, so I don't have any newer folding displays to compare this to. Now, the one thing I was disappointed on with this, there's no stylus support. For a big display like this one, that's a big con for me because I use a stylus for editing on the go all the time. I hope that they add stylus support for a Gen 2 model. That would be very high on my like, perfect phone dream wish list. Like I mentioned before, the hinge is very fluid. It does sit really sturdy at any position that you put it at. So if you want to use this phone in a tabletop mode while setting it down, 
It's very well balanced and it's not going to tip over and the sensors and the haptic feel very responsive as you've noticed when it's auto adjusting the screen back and forth as I flip it from side to side. It's very quick. Now, since it packs in 12 gigs of RAM, Google's Tensor G2 and their Titan M2 for security, I am seeing zippy quick responses by my apps. I'm seeing solid, no lag 4K video editing. Multitasking feels solid and really, really complements the display, especially when you do stuff like split screening. In terms of 3D Mark, I did run some benchmarks. So here's some benchmarks on the screen and these were my findings. I found that more apps than I thought actually work really well on the large display. Now, social media apps, they really need to catch up. They are still narrow. They don't have a good tablet interface. Like here, I've got Twitter pulled up. It is a narrow interface. Now you can double click on either side to kind of push it or snap it over to the edges, which that's nice. And you can also use those narrower apps in split screen. So you can definitely like open up your photos app and then open up your Twitter account over on the other side and be able to access all your data like that. And it covers up the entirety of the screen. So that's an option too. But apps such as Adobe Rush or CapCut, which I use for video editing, productivity apps like Notion and hobbyist apps like Flight Radar 24. All of those look so good on this tablet interface and they take advantage of the screen real estate. Now, I am so glad that we're getting five years of updates for this phone. It does include that Titan M2 security chipset for onboard security. Plus you get Google One VPN and biometrics in terms of a fingerprint sensor built into the power button and there is face unlock. Now the fingerprint unlock is done through a capacitive power button and it works similar to the new Pixel tablet that I reviewed previously. It is responsive. It does not require you to press down on the button first, but the screen does need to be on in order to unlock it. Face unlock works really well as well. It works like the 7 Pro, but only via the camera on the outer display. It is not available for the camera on the inner display. Wi-Fi 6E, if you have a wireless access point that supports it, is really fast. And this phone does take advantage of those upgraded speeds. It also has Bluetooth 5.2 built in, which gives me a really nice solid connection to my Pixel Bud earbuds. And I did not have any issues connecting to my cell phone carrier via 5G out here in Denver. Now, as always, your connection speeds are definitely going to vary based on location, availability, et cetera, et cetera. Now, let's talk cameras. I am really happy with this set of lenses. I've been very much enjoying taking pictures and videos with this thing. Now here are the specs for the front facing camera, the one on the outside. And these are the specs for that inner camera. They are pretty close on paper and the same can be said of my example photos. The hues and the color saturation is pretty comparable. I generally don't use portrait mode since I prefer the natural bow from the physical lenses. And here you can see the edges of my hat kind of merged with the clouds behind me. They are very quick and responsive compared to the shutter. And I like the field of view. It gives me plenty of space to take group selfies with friends or family. They do differ when it comes to video though. The outer front lens can do 4K video while the inner front lens can only do 1080p 30. So I think it's obvious that they expect you to use the outer selfie camera for photos or recorded videos that you like intend to put online while the inner one is probably best used for video calls. Now the rear set of cameras definitely shines. You get three of them here on the back. There's the main lens, an ultra wide, and a telephoto. The main lens is solid and it is the standard that I expect from a Pixel phone. Great colors, excellent clarity, really nice sharpness, and beautiful bokeh. I do have some great shots from the crack and Celtic Legacy, which are my favorite bands at the Colorado Renaissance Festival, using the telephoto to zoom in at varying lengths. Now here's a shot of Garden of the Gods with the ultra wide lens, the main lens, then the telephoto at 2X, 5X, and 20X. Portrait mode didn't give me the best cutout, a similar expectation to my other Pixel phones. These photos of myself and my friends at the Ren Fair give you a really good idea of what to expect whenever the sun is kind of glaring at you at a bad angle. You 
can definitely see that lens flare and a little side note pro tip, if you wanna get rid of a lens flare in a picture and you don't like its artistic vibe, you can just add your hand on top of the lens where you can't see it in the camera, but you have it covering the lens so that it adds a lens hood even when you're out and about. You can do that with smartphones. But the Pixel Fold captures all of our facial details even though we are in shade and technically the sun was shining at a bad angle. Now you can tell the shutter is really fast when I was twirling around in my dress. It still captured all of the skirt clearly, even though there are lots of movement in there. The one thing that you don't get is a good macro mode, something that you do get in the 7 Pro. Macro mode is niche for sure. Not a lot of people use it, but I use it all the time to take highly detailed photos of things for my job. Now I love the rear camera selfie mode combined with palm selfie activation. This is how you switch over to the rear selfie mode. You just click the little icon here in the corner. This asks if you want to switch screens. And when I click switch screens now, it activates the cover screen. So now I can take pictures with my rear screen and this one is turned off. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's so cool. So the fact that I can take, oh, I'm totally gonna record a video on here. Oh, look at it, it's so cool. There you are right there. <laughs> so the fact that I can take selfies with the nice 48 megapixel half inch sensor makes me a very happy content creator. <laughs> Recording looks great. I can do my usual 4K 30P videos, even though we were hanging out in the hot sun at the Ren Fair. This thing did not explode into flame. It never shut down and it took the constant use like a champ with no overheating issues. Stabilization is excellent and the videos are very clear. So here's some examples with some audio. no zoom, walking for image stabilization test. My dear Bagginses and Bottoms. Hey! My dear Tooks and Bottoms. Hey! hey. With the 4821 milliamp per hour typical battery, you will see decent screen on times, more so if you don't flip the phone open as often as I do. So I tend to watch a lot of YouTube in the background while I'm working on the unfolded screen. So I do have my screen on for several hours. Google says that you can get beyond 24 hours of battery life on the Pixel Fold. And I have certainly left the device in my studio overnight, not charging, just to see if that was the case. And it was. The battery did not drain much while it was not in use when it was just sitting here on standby mode. So I woke up the next day with a decent percentage left. Now here you will see a bunch of screenshots of my battery settings page to give you some examples based on my prosumer usage. The first few show the battery life when it was open and the screen was on the whole time and I was just trying to drain that battery. A few of these days include performance benchmarking and airplane travel. So those numbers are going to vary. You can take advantage of Google's fast charging 30 watt USB-C charger and wireless Qi charging is also built in. It's located on the back, so best to use whenever you have this thing folded. I'm really excited that Google is diving into foldables. I think it's so cool. And I hope that we see a second generation that also offers stylus support. I am enjoying this phone so much that I actually put my main SIM in it. And as a reviewer, that is not something that I do with every single phone that I am testing. I know I haven't experienced any of the durability issues that some folks have, however, this is an expensive device, so take care of your investment. Now, I am working on a big pro tips video showing some of these features more in depth and also giving you some more examples that I did not have time to show in this video. So subscribe for those. Leave any questions you have down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye, y'all.